Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The word for today is love. There is the church and there is the church. One is the bride of Christ, the called out believe body of believers, the universal church. I'm talking about that entity, that organization that Jesus spoke of when he said, I will build my church on the rock himself, and declared that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Pause here for one moment. Please understand that if it is of God, then automatically it attracts the anger and wrath of the devil. Satan is totally against anything that God creates, period. So Jesus did not build an artificial fortified wall around the church and insulate her against the efforts of the devil. Rather, Jesus provides such a defense that no weapon that is formed against the church will prosper. Say amen if you agree. When Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against it, he was talking about himself, the sure foundation of the church. In other words, when Satan attempts to attempt the body of believers, he is foolishly attacking the foundation of the church. Let me state that another way. There is a family of however many children and parents. Dad and mom have a policy, ironclad policy, that if anyone attempts to harm their children, they have messed with the family and the parents are coming to get you. That is Jesus. Satan cannot win against the church. So understand that the church will be attacked, but the most sophisticated ammunition of Satan, the most deadly weapon of Satan, the most intricate strategy of Satan, none of that will succeed. As a Christian, you need to know this. You are a part of the most secure, the most secure institution in the whole universe. And though Satan should buffet, though trials may come, it is well Jesus' bride called the church, built on the solid rock, is alive and well. So now let us visit the other church, the local church of which you are a part, the church that meets somewhere every week or several times a week. We are talking of the community of believers that have come together in the wider community identify themselves as a church with a pastor or a priest as the head. You know what I'm talking about. Well, let us talk about the church that you attend. That church is made up of human beings. And that church is led by a human or a group of human leaders. That church exists for the benefit of the people who are part of that church. It is a place of worship. It is a place where we go to learn what we need as Christians. It is a place where we pray together and for one another. And it is a place where we break bread together. Acts 2 and verse 42. The church that you attend is a place where imperfect people assemble. And I guarantee you where two or three human beings are together, there is bound to be challenges. So let us talk among ourselves straight talk to church members. Come with me to Romans 12 verses 9 to 21, and I have divided it into three segments for purposes of our conversation. Part one, love each other. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Romans 12 verses 9 to 13. It is easy to say, but it is hard to do. You know there are some people in your church that it is hard to love. These are people who offend you, who do things every now and then that are not nice. I know what you're talking about. And the word of God says to us today, love them just the same. Jesus said that when you love each other, you are preaching a loud message to the world that we are the disciples of Christ. John 13 verses 34 35. Part 2. Love them regardless. Bless those who persecute you. 
bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Romans 12, 14 to 16. The most logical thing in human relations is to hate people who hurt you. Cut them off. Have nothing to do with them. Walk on the other side of the road if you see them lying on the roadside. It is natural to be like that. But it is noble to love people who don't like you, who you cannot get along with. You must keep loving them regardless of what they might do to you. Part 3. Love wins the war. Romans 12, 17 to 21. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I know it hurts when you experience the painful things that your brothers and sisters in church can do to you, the backstabbing, the malice, the anger, the avoidance when they see you. Jesus says, love your brother and sister unconditionally. Mm -mm -mm. If they hurt you, love them. If they cause you to cry, love them. If they do not help you in times of your need, love them. To love them is to not do to them what they do to you. Instead, love them. Listen, you know how loud a sermon you preach when someone in the church has openly hurt you, spoken badly against you, and you can find it in your heart to visit that person if they are in the hospital, or you know their car is in the shop and you give them a ride to church and from church. You think I know, know that that is tough? But guess what? Jesus knows too, and still he says, love them. Don't ever stop loving them. Cry beyond closed doors about what they have done to you, but emerge with love in your heart, sincere love. Pray for them, forgive them, and keep on loving them. And when you do, you are defeating Satan. I leave this scripture with you. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. First Peter 4. And verse 8.